Hello y'all, this is the Hearts of Iron 4 mod, Red Flood. It takes place in a world where no one country was truly able to win World War I. We are going to play as the nation of Assyria. It was created by the retreating Caucasus army forces of the Russian army. The majority of the population is Christian, but there are non-Christians and they have very little representation. Despite this, the country is peaceful and developing well under the leadership of the Patriarch of the Assyrian Church of the East. We begin with two national spirits and they are Domination of the Assyrian Church of the East and Veterans of the Caucasian Voluntary Army. Looking at the army, we have one division of Mountaineers, one division of Cavalry, and one division of Infantry. As for Commanders, there are two Generals. Now for military technology, we have up-to-date weapons, motorized, and fighters, and that's it. Getting started in the focus tree, let's do Liberate the Homeland, and after that, adopt Greater Assyria Plan. In the middle of the night, the leader of Assyria and the Patriarch of the Assyrian Church of the East sees a vision of Jesus Christ, and he leaves the earthly world behind at the age of 59. The nation will need a new person to lead it. The His Holiness's Dead Focus has been automatically completed, and now we have something kind of like a civil war going on. Let's have the provisional government of Assyria, led by Shimonashai the 21st, emerge as the victor by clicking on the Assyrian Church of the East militias, repels the raids. So we got a new leader, the aforementioned Shimonashai the 21st. Besides that, nothing much has changed, including the country itself, as well as the ruling party ideology. Shimonashai the 21st is historically known as Shimonashai the 23rd. He was the 119th Patriarch of the Assyrian Church of the East from 1920 at the age of 12 to 1975 when he was killed. He anonymously wrote a book named The Assyrian Tragedy, which documents the national struggle of the Assyrian nation prior to, during, and after World War I. He was only credited as the writer of this book after he had died. Not very far away from us, there is unrest taking place in the nearby British Mashriq. We have acquired cores on their land, so we are going to justify a war goal on the neighboring country of Al Jazeera. In the focus tree, let's do Army of Descendants of Ashurbanipal, Russian advisors, and incorporate tribal militias. Forget manual justification, because I just noticed there is a couple return to Nineveh decisions that will let us get war goals on Al Jazeera and Kurdistan for free. Let's get this war started. Strength-wise, I'd say we are about equal to them. A fallback line has been made. What we're going to do is draw the soldiers of Al Jazeera up into Hakari, and then we are going to have one of our divisions swing down into Mosul. All the enemy units are trapped, so we are free to do whatever we want. And with that said, the war is already essentially over. We got Mosul, now we go for Tikrit. After that, we are going to go into western Al Jazeera. It's almost over, and those guys are still stuck. Al Jazeera has been annexed, and with that done, our next foe is going to be the nation of Kurdistan. To our west, a civil war has started in Persia between the Shahdom of Persia and the Persian People's Socialist Republic. We are going to use a decision to get the war goal for the Kurds. The strategy for this war is to abandon the area we took over and try to focus on coming down into enemy territory from Hakari. It looks like the plan is working, maybe. Once that enemy unit leaves Erbil, we will capture the city as well as any other nearby places that have victory points. Our opponent's soldiers are busy trying to expand into the undefended Al Jazeera. We will continue with our attack by seizing Suleiman Yaya and recapturing Mosul. The conflict is won. Like with Al Jazeera, Assyria is going to annex every part of Kurdistan. The Finns have a civil war. Speaking of civil wars, it seems that the Socialists could possibly lose the one in Persia. Change of plans in the focus tree. Instead of doing incorporate tribal militias, we are going to complete administration of liberated territories, fair land redistribution, and support the Assyrian colonies. In Russia slash Central Asia, the Arinbur People's Republic declares war on the Kazakh Red Army. Persia can finally stop fighting itself. The Shah has won. We have more expansion for the country planned, and to help us with that, we are going to make a bigger army with more infantry. Up north above the Caucasus region, the Southeastern Union has started fighting the Arinbur People's Republic. In a strange move, the People's Republic I just mentioned has started clashing with the General Governorate of Turkestan. 
Continuing on in the focus tree, let's do back to the Nineveh Plains, tax reform, incorporate tribal militia, and then we'll go over to the left and complete new patriarch is elected. The general governate of the steppes declares war on Turkestan a little too late. I say that because the country doesn't exist anymore. In British Mashriq, a country that is our neighbor, there has been a Zionist revolt. This has resulted in a war between the Kingdom of Syria and the United Zionist Front. Since Syria is going to be busy, I imagine this is going to be a good opportunity to justify a war goal on them. Something happened in East Asia, but more importantly, the Sabbath ceasefire has occurred. Israel now officially exists, and also Jordan and the French Mandate of Lebanon are a thing. Ancient Traditions Shimon Ashai the 21st sits on the Assyrian Church of the East Temporary Temporal Throne. He seeks to express his desire to maintain the unity of the Assyrian national idea and maintain their traditions and lifestyles. He meets with several religious figures from Russia and the USA. Given his position, he receives the title of His Holiness. More focuses, let's do reunite the diaspora, invest in agriculture, support manufacturers, invite Russian capitalists, form the Hakari Arsenal, and build the Hakari Ermia Railway. Our main division only has a combat width of 12. To give it more firepower, we are going to move that up to 20. We have started battling with Syria. Assyrian troops are on the defensive right now, but we will see how long that will last. To make things more efficient, we are going to promote the general we aren't using to field marshal. We're going on the offensive now, and we soon might have a breakthrough near Aleppo. After that, we are going to take Latakia and Holmes. The combat near Aleppo didn't really pan out for us, so new plan. Let's make a fallback line from Araka to Mosul. In the focus tree, let's complete found the Assyrian Academy of Sciences for the research slot, and after that, let's do some stuff relating to the military. A few Syrian divisions have wandered into Assyria through Al Jazeera, and now we are going to cut them off from their supplies. If this works, at least one third, perhaps, of the enemy army will be gone. Three units make their last stand at Kirkuk. Meanwhile, the bulk of our forces are going to slam into the weakened front lines of Syria. The army of our opponent has more or less fallen apart. Soon, all of the land of this nation will belong to Assyria. More invasions are to take place. First, we will hit the French Mandate of Lebanon and then Jordan to the south. News has arrived from another part of the world saying that the United States has collapsed. Isn't that unfortunate? We are maneuvering our way into Jordan. While the Jordanian soldiers are kept busy, our cavalry will advance upon their capital. Soon we will fight with Israel. The last time these two peoples fought was when there was a kingdom of Israel, a kingdom of Judah, and a Neo-Assyrian Empire. The first one was conquered by the Assyrians, but the second was not. With all the stuff on the right side of the focus tree done, we're going to go over and complete support from brothers in faith, destroy the internal opposition, negotiate with tribal leaders, holy rule is secured, promote conversion among Muslims, help the poor, and church school network. The Israelis are quite a challenge to fight, but after leaving Jordan undefended and moving across the coastal plain, and into Tel Aviv, we have a good chance of capturing the city of Jerusalem. The holy city is finally ours. Let me do the math real quick, since an Assyrian king, Sennacherib, did have an attempted siege. Okay, all it took for the Assyrians to get this place was 2,640 years. More land will be nice, so for that reason we are attacking Saudi Arabia. This shouldn't be a hard war since at this point we have a relatively large army. A focus has given us a commander named Yusuf Malik. This guy historically was an Assyrian politician and he also served with the British in World War I. Saudi Arabia is now part of Assyria. Looking at our current borders overall, I'd say we did pretty good. With all of our wars, the Assyrian nation has risen to such a point it hasn't seen since before the times of Jesus Christ and of Alexander the Great. It may be similar territorially to its ancient ancestors, but this incarnation is more like a theocracy as the leader of the country is the patriarch of the Eastern Christian Assyrian Church of the East. The video is going to stop here. If you enjoyed the mod, check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment because it helps the algorithm recommend the video more. Have an awesome day. I'll see you later. Bye.